Good morning everybody and welcome to Chris Park in Shooting Sports. I'm going to make a little bit of a different type of video today. I'm not going to do an unboxing video and a review video. I'm going to do an all-in-one video and try and capture as much as I possibly can from start to finish. Now this is a Steyr Arm CL2 carbon heavy barrel. We'll look at that in one second, but I'm just going to show you the box you get with it to start with because it's a full hard case and in the hard case you get a detailed instruction manual, all the documents with it and you get a baseball cap as well. That's a padded hard case and that gives you nice long-term storage for both transit and keeping around in the armory if you want and you won't damage it. Just pop that out of the way now because hopefully you're more interested in the rifle. So this is the CL2 from Steyr Arms. Let's have a look from start to finish because I'm going to do a lot of this live on camera. Right, starting out at the front, I've just checked we've got a moderator to fit it and the thread is let me just check, it's a 5.8 UNEF moderator under a cap here which will go on and that's going to be fine, great to shoot. Now these are cold hammer forged barrels and Steyr being them, one of the inventors of cold hammer forging if not the inventor, leave the external twist on the barrel. This looks superb, gives you a nice tactile finish and it really differentiates from a lot of other brands and it's one of those real Steyr hallmarks. Moving back to the action, you can see it's fairly streamlined in shape. It's got three mounting screws on the front action bridge and three at the rear. And we're going to be putting some scope mounting bases on those. But looking at the bolt, let's just for starters, see if we can get the bolt out. Just need to remember how to do this. I think we rotate the safety catch all the way back. So we've got two, we've got four lugs on the bolt. We've got an extractor claw there and an injector plunger there. And there's a bolt handle at the back, as you would expect with a handle on it. And that's polymer on the actual handle. So if I put this back in the rifle now, we'll see a little few of the quirks of a sty and how it works. As you would expect, safety catch needs to be off to operate the bolt. So the bolt will now operate and we have a two-stage trigger. Backwards, forwards, stage trigger again, or we can single set the trigger, click that forwards, and we have a much lighter pull. And that is super light. Now, if I push the bolt down, the safety catch on the stye is a roller arrangement and if I put it there, that has got the bolt locked. If I roll one stage forward, I can still operate the bolt but it's on safe and if I go forward another one we get the red mark and it will do fire. Recock that, now I think if I put it on safe, that bolt handle will actually lock further down. It needs to be on the lock setting and it will lock further down and that makes it go much flatter, more comfortable for carrying if required and it's another thing that I've only ever seen stye do. And you see, as I put it onto fire, it clicks back up and we're ready to go again. Right, let's weigh the trigger and see what it does. I'm just going to move this out of the way for the moment, because that was really there when we start to start to address putting a scope on the rifle. Right, so it's in standard setting here. So click ready on this. I'm just going to put it into grams. and We'll see if we can get a setting reading on this 1378 grams on the normal setting and that's three pound 0.6 ounces now if i close that down and put it into single set mode we're going to see a really light trigger pull now you've got to be quite careful addressing it without setting it off accidentally 101 grams and that is 3.6 ounces so if you want a light trigger the styre really is the light trigger just pop the magazine out that magazine, I think, holds five rounds, and it's a 6.5 Creedmoor rifle, this one. So that will also hold um, 243, 280 Rem, 308 Winchester, 338 Federal, 6.5 Creedmoor, 6mm, oh, sorry, 7mm, 08 as well. You're going to see me reveal a real secret shortly because the reading glasses will come on. Now, as well as the Cold Hammer Force steel bow, we've got a carbon stock. So you're obviously saving a lot of weight there. The stock is slightly asymmetric in design, although it could be shot left-handed if necessary. It's really designed for the right-handed shooter. You've got a nice firm rubber recoil pad. It's not too squishy. It isn't going to go and bury itself in your shoulder. And you've got a slight, as I say, asymmetric cheap piece arrangement on it. Let's have a little look at some of the weights and dimensions here. So, where has my measuring tape gone? I've left my measuring tape over there. Right, we're back in the room. Right, barrel length is 
just to see if there's a gas escape port. There isn't a gas escape port visible. Barrel length looks to be 26 inches, which is 660 millimeters. Overall length on the rifle is 46 inches, which is 1170 millimeters. And one thing I do like to know, the length of pull on this rifle is 14 inches, which is 356 millimeters. So that's why it feels instantly comfortable in the shoulder for me because that's the kind of length of pull I like on a rifle. Right, what does it weigh? Pop the scales down. Turn these on, fire them up, see what they say. That's weighing in grams now, make sure we're not got that going down on top of anything else. And we have got a weight of 3,594 grams. Swap that to pounds and ounces, that's seven pound, seven pound 15 ounces. So we know the rough weights are measured. Now this barrel diameter, let's just have a look and see what that is. I'm gonna go with about a 17 millimeter there. See if my eyes are working at this time in the morning. No, it's a 20 millimeter barrel. My eyes aren't working at this time in the morning. So it is a heavy barrel rifle. It's gonna give you a bit more accuracy, a bit more precision. And of course, it's gonna be a bit more stable in the aim. Now looking at some of the additional accessories on the stock, we've actually got threaded screw holes here for uh, sling studs. So you can obviously put your sling studs in, mount your sling on it or a bipod on it. I need to double check what the threads on those are. I suspect this being an Austrian rifle, they'll be metric but I'll check what they are, see if I've got a bipod we can fit onto that. And if not, I've got some good bags to shoot from, which are often one of the most accurate methods of shooting anyway, hence why bench rest shooters use a bag rest. Uh, right, next stage. Let's just put these things to one side and get this here. I'm just gonna lock that in. Right, I'm 45 years old, here's the secret. I wear reading glasses because I'm fed up with straining and life's just a lot easier if you put your glasses on when you want to look at stuff. So we've got some worn Maximus scope bases. These are steel scope bases and the weaver fit. So I'll just pop all these out with all their fasteners into the tray. And there'll be a front and a rear base. Now, there doesn't appear to be a massive difference in profile, but there will be. M918, M918. So they must be identical front and rear. Right, let's take these screws out and see which, what's the screw spacing on them. So that is obviously intended for the front and rear, the front and rear of the three screws in the actual receiver itself. So I'll just pop that one back down and I'll just lift these screws out. Now, as macho man as I want to be, these are quite small and very tricky to see without your reading glasses on. Hence why I'm wearing them and hopefully dropping them in controlled circumstances. Front, rear, just pop those out. Because if you lose these, they used to joke in some of my other hobbies, they used to call it fridge suck, because if you drop something in your kitchen, it always rolled underneath the fridge, which is the hardest place to get to. Right, so we've got versatility with these because we can put the, um, we can put the slot either to the front or to the rear, depending on how we want the actual scope to fit precisely. And these come with T15 Torx screws. Now, we're not going to start a debate on thread locking and things like that. I have my own feelings on it. I have discussed it in a video before, but I won't be discussing it in this one because I would thread lock these on. But if you thread lock bases on, be aware if you try and take them off without using the correct technique, you can tear the head out of the screw and you're then left with a more complicated engineering problem. If you thread lock stuff, it needs heat to get it out. I personally like to hold an Allen key in something or a Torx wrench, and I'll then heat the Allen key, which will then transfer heat through the screw body directly into the threads and soften the thread lock. Now, I don't like to over torque screws like these because they're quite small. And I'm going for, I would estimate about four Newton meters on those because that just feels about right, but it just feels right. I can't tell you for exactly, and I'm sure the manual will contain all the details, but I just go with what feels right, and I've been doing this for a long time. Right, so we've got some scope base on it now. Here's one I prepared earlier. Here's a scope. You might recognize this. It is an element scope. It's the, um, which one is this? This is the Nexus Gen 2, I think, and I've got this. It came off a, a, another rifle the other day. 
and we'll just have to have a look and see if that'll just pop straight down. It probably won't because I'll need to adjust one of the rings on it just to make sure that they fit directionally perfectly. This is also in worn rings. It's a 30 millimeter tube. And the big thing about these worn rings is, I do like, is that although they take a bit of time to put on a scope, once you've got them on the scope, they're very easy to alter because all you need to do is just slacken two screws at the top of the T15 Torx and you can just move the tube backwards and forwards really easily so you can set your eye relief and set the spacing of the mounts. Now, this might work, it might take a little bit more adjustment which I then won't be doing on camera, but essentially I can just, just let those loosen up a little bit, make sure everything's lined up and I'll put the front ring, quick release ring so it's got a lever on the side Lock that in position, then I'm going to do the same with the rear one. Always squeeze your scope and scope rings towards the front so that they are up against the hard edge of the scope mount or the scope base. And we can nip that down. I'm just going to slacken these just a tiny little bit more, let it rotate a little bit more easily because I'm working behind on the other side of the scope here, so it's a little bit tricky. But you know, we do these things on camera to help you see what we're doing. It actually stops us seeing what we're doing. Right, so pop them back off. Let's have a little look at the eye relief for this scope. Now you can see on this scope, we've actually got a trigger cam mounted on it. That doesn't affect eye relief at all because it uses a prismatic system to film through the optic. But essentially, whatever you've got your scope set up doing is what you still see. And the trigger cam doesn't interfere with anything. It doesn't, inter doesn't interfere with eye relief. It doesn't interfere with the actual physical spacing you've got from your optic. I'm just gonna move that forward just a little bit because I generally shoot on a review rifle, I'll shoot it prone or I'll shoot it from the bench. I'll have a few shots and sticks and I'm just going to line that up. Take that out. I can line the bottom crosshair up with the little grey tab on top of the safety catch. So if I move my eye all the way back and I can see a heavily vignetted image it's really impossible to show this on camera, but you end up with a tiny circle in the bottom of the scope with a line going through it at the bottom of the crosshair. And then of course, you can just turn it into position and the joy of the worn mounts is, you don't affect the scope when you're tightening them up. It doesn't tend to rotate the optic at all. So I'm just gonna tighten these up, finger tight, about two Newton meters on these. I can check them all with a torque wrench and just complete them when I've done the job afterwards. Now given this is a heavy barrel, a little bit more precision, I've got quite a good magnification range on here. This goes from 4 all the way up to 25 power, so I can use it precision and I've got adjustable parallax illumination, dialable turrets and everything. And if we can get the uh, trigger cam working fine, I'll do some video through the scope too when we're shooting it. But essentially, there we go. That is what I will do to the gun before I go off to the range. I'll take the bolt out, I'll give it a clean up run through the barrel, make sure everything's nice and nice and clean because you know sometimes these things have been in storage for a couple of months and they've come with packing oils and grease and things like that in them. And I've got a sound moderator to go on it as well. So I can shoot low recoil, super quiet, and away we go. I've got multiple types of 6.5 Creedmoor ammunition and I will run them, I'll probably run three, four, maybe five types of ammunition through it. If it's a five round magazine, we'll shoot five shot groups. Um, and let's see how it goes on. And I'll be back this afternoon, hopefully with my overall opinion of it. And um, we shall see what the rest of the video contains. So stick with it.
Right, well I'm back from the range. Um, it rained and it was windy, so I've just finished drying the gun off. And um, What I can report is that it worked very well, there were no problems with it at all. I would have preferred had it had some sling studs on it so I could have put a bipod, but range bags always work. Unfortunately, my favorite range bag actually ripped when I got it out of the truck today, so I had to use some improvised ones, but we got there in the end. Um, what have I learned about it? It shoots fine. I've come home, I've cleaned the barrel, the barrel cleans up very well. After about 20 rounds, it sort of then settled into better performance, and we've got you know the overall test target here where we can see the, you know, the variations that go along and it really started to get better right towards the end once it had a, you know, 20 or 30 rounds to it and then started being cleaned and I got used to it. Um, I do like the twin lateral magazine release catches because you intrinsically, you know, get hold of it, both sides, pull it out and it's, it's the catch is already in your fingers which is sometimes a little bit easier than having a separate catch in front of the magazine well. But that is totally intuitive and automatic. The stock is stiff, there's no problem with intermittent barrel contact. Um, I would have preferred maybe a little bit more grip on it and it is a slightly unusual specification because it's a heavy barrel with a very light stock. So you'll probably see me on the video, I did sort of kind of have to get hold a little bit just to make sure I was manipulating the bolt correctly and I wasn't obviously nudging the rifle too much off position. I did make one mistake. I was too busy on camera this morning putting the scope mouse on and I forgot to put them with the torque wrench and didn't tighten them up. And the group suddenly started opening up and it's because the base had come loose. And um, once I re-tightened them, they were fine. It just comes back again. On bases like this with very small screws, you can't put huge amounts of torque on them. Personally, I will always use thread lock. But this is a rifle loaned to me by Sportsman Gun Centre, the UK distributor. So it's not really mine to treat as I would long term, as you know, in my own way, because I need to take this apart before it goes back after the loan. Interestingly, this rifle is only listed on that website, and I'll put a link to the website so you can see it. This rifle is only listed in 6.5 Creedmoor and 3.38 Lapua. So that's a fair cartridge size for a, a you know a light stock rifle still a heavy barrel but I'd be interested to see how big that was overall in comparison whether it actually had an even heavier barrel profile. The bolt works fine there's no issues at all with that you get good positive ejection it feeds smoothly. One thing I did say though is I estimated that might be a five round magazine and it's not it's a four round magazine but you'll see me slotting around into the chamber most of the time because I wanted to do five shot groups because in my mind, I tend to think heavy barrel needs to do five shot groups, light barrels will do three shot groups, but everything really was sub MOA once it had run in and I'd check the scope bases. So that is all fine. The trigger is very predictable. Um, I didn't use the set trigger option. I just don't feel the need for a 100 gram trigger on, on a hunting or sporting rifle. A 100 gram trigger, it's, a, it's too light for me. And, and especially when it's cold and you've not got that much tactile sensation in your fingertips, you know, touch it and it's gone. But some people do like that and do want that. And you can also see how quick and easy it is to load that top dual stack magazine. And you can, of course, load it through the ejection port into the mag if you want to because of that design. The stock was comfortable, the head position was comfortable, and the recoil pad was also grippy, it held in your shoulder fine, and I don't like big thick spongy recoil pads, this is my kind of preference, sort of 15mm, 20mm thick and a good firm feel. There's a slight cheap piece raised up here, I didn't try shooting it left handed, there wasn't really any need. The star carbon stock was comfortable to shoot, and most importantly, it deadened the noise. It was the recoil was transferred straight through to you, but there wasn't any vibration or any ring. And if you bump it or tap it, it's not particularly noisy or hollow sounding, which I quite like. But again, I think this is more of a bench rifle than a hunting rifle in this format with a heavy barrel. Although if you went for a lighter barrel with a carbon stock model, I think that would be a really appealing rifle to have a look at. I didn't actually shoot it left-handed, but I didn't find any need to do that. That's something I'd more, you know, more likely do on an improvised uh, hunting shot, go left-handed if I needed to. If you are a left-hander, you could shoot this rifle fine. It's not perfect left-handed because of the asymmetric grip shape, but you will get on okay with it. The barrel is cleaned up easily. That's not an issue at all, and I'm very happy with that. And Steyr barrels have always proved to me to be very reliable. Um, I think overall it's a it's a very worthy rifle but one thing I would say is it might be nice with a little bit more grip maybe some inlay grip panels on the stock because there's nothing really other than the smooth carbon finish which although it looks superb 
does have that slight tactile issue and of course when the gun got wet today you do start to notice it is uh, it isn't quite as easily held on to the range of Steyr rifles is massive and to be frank, across the range, I haven't had a disappointing barrel. These cold hammer forged barrels with the external, you know, barley twist on them, they are superb and I'm quite confident in them. Well, if you enjoyed that review, please like, subscribe, comment and click the notification bell. If you go through to the end of the video, there is a link to the British Shooting Show 2024, which is at the end of this month at the NEC, 23rd to the 25th. You click the links, get your tickets. Come along. All the Star Rifles will be on the Sportsman Gun Centre stands and there will be hundreds of other stands and exhibitors there with various other rifles and you get your one chance of the year in the UK to pretty much get hold of everything that's available for sale in the rifle world. Look through all the optics, see all the accessories and if you do bump into me, say hello and we might even get to chat for five minutes. Thanks for watching, bye for now.